We're taking a little break from our study of the book of Luke. I know some of you are going through Luke, Luke, Lucan withdrawal. Uh, I promise you we'll get back to it next week. But we wanted to take a break to revisit a topic that is central to our kingdom life, community life together. But once a year we do this, just to remind ourselves what it's about. And I'm talking about worship and praise. Like everything else in our life, if we're not careful, there's a sort of atrophy that takes place. And so once in a while, you've got to remind yourself what you're doing and what, what, what it's about. And, and so we're taking two weeks off to talk about and practice worship last week and praise this week. Worship is where we romance God, enter into intimacy with God, gaze upon His beauty. And we talked about that last week. This week, I wanted to have a little sermonette on what praise is. Because in praise, we celebrate who God is. We celebrate His goodness and His attributes and all that He has done. So I want to entitle this message, Praise Him, and I'm going to read from Psalms 150, a praise Him psalm if ever there was one. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. Praise Him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise Him with the harp and lyre. Praise Him with the timbrel and the dancing. Praise Him with the strings and pipe. Praise Him with the crash of cymbals. Praise Him with the resounding cymbals. My favorite verse right there. Everyone knows you cannot uh, really experience the depth of uh, the Spirit of God in, in celebration unless you've got drums involved. Thank you very much. Let everything that has breath and everything that makes noise praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Lord, we just ask that during this next 20 minutes or so, God, you remind us about how important it is to celebrate who you are and what you have done. And God, even as I do that, I pray that a spirit of celebration would descend on us. And God, that you'd lift our spirits and draw us into the inner court to dance before you and pour ourselves out in celebratory praise of who you are and what you've done. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Okay, confession time. I, a couple days, did not want to be up here talking to you about this. I have had... Well, to call it a rough week is a massive, massive understatement. Uh, it, it's been a brutal week, honestly, uh, an emotionally raw week. The kind of week where you feel like your emotions are sort of like an exposed nerve in your tooth and they're just getting, it's just exposed, it's just on surface. The kind of week where you hear a certain song and you start crying. It's just the kind of week that it almost feels like there's, there's a bomb that gets dropped into your lap and blows apart and your life is kind of shattered. It's kind of weak where you're, the foundations that you rely on are shaken. Uh, it, it's, it's just a, a week that uh, you have very little to celebrate. It's raw. It's kind of weak where you, you, you have to be very intentional and work hard at keeping at bay demonic forces of despair and hopelessness. Because it would be really easy to sink into a vortex of that. And you, you know what I'm talking about. We, we've been through that. And when you're in that spot, the kind of week I've had, and the, the dark spot that that can create, the last thing you feel like doing is celebrating. In fact, when you're in that dark spot, uh, it feels hypocritical, maybe shallow to celebrate. When you're in that dark spot, you see other people celebrating, you can have a judgment mechanism that comes on all those Pollyanna Christians who just, ah, life is happy, life is good, and you know how, how life sucks. And it looks like they're being shallow and, and, and artificial, and, and, and you just can't enter into that. So it, would, might, it might seem when you're in that dark spot. And there's a part of me this week as I'm thinking about this message. I think those who know what's going on, and I'm not at liberty to share uh, what went on this week, uh, but... Um, there's very few things as painful as, as watching a loved one in pain. You'd rather be there, there yourself, emotional pain. And it was that kind of week. And, and those who are in on that and understand what was going on, my small group and others, they, they would totally understand, anyone would understand if I wanted to take a week off and just say, I'm missing up to it this week. That would have been understandable. But especially given that it's on celebration. Because how can you come up here and talk about authentically celebrating when you're coming off of a week like this. 
And it can feel artificial and hypocritical. But, but God really helped me do a reframe on this. And really sort of drove home to me the message that as I'm in this spot right now, this is the exact right time to talk to people about celebrating who God is. You see, the thinking that says you can't celebrate when life is going bad is a very carnal kind of thinking, very worldly, normal by worldly standards, but it's very carnal. In the world, you celebrate when things are going well, right? You throw a party because you're happy. Your circumstances are fortunate. You're happy because your marriage is nice and your kids are all turning out great. You're happy because your finances are doing well and, and you're happy because you got friends all around and there's things to celebrate. Nice things are happening. Uh, you know, the Vikings won a game. You won't be doing much of that celebrating this year, but last year uh, you had a couple games. You know, things to get happy about. Or maybe you're happy because you invested in a certain stock and it went through the ceiling and now you have a bunch of money. You won't be celebrating that much recently or in the future. But, but yeah, last year you could have celebrated that. But you celebrate when things are fortunate, when, when, when things are going well. And when they're not, you don't celebrate. In the world, the circumstances define your disposition. Your emotions define whether or not you're going to celebrate or not. In the world, it's, it's uh, up and down. But see... Praising God isn't about that. Praising God isn't about being happy with the, the circumstances of life. Praising God is about praising God. It's about celebrating who God is. And while life always changes, God never changes. And while life sometimes sucks, God never sucks. <laughs> while life can sometimes deal you some bad stuff, God is always good. While life can be very ugly, God is always beautiful. God is always lovely. God is always deserving of praise. The one thing you can stand on, the one thing you can count on, the one thing that will never change, the one shelter you've got in every storm, is God. The Lord Jesus Christ reveals the character of God. You can stand on that. In fact, especially in circumstances that are dark, it's so important. It's so important to run to the refuge and to... Get your eyes fixed upon the Lord. What often happens is that when the circumstances cave in and you get the bad report about your health or you lose the house or the finances are taking or, or whatever it is, we can easily let those circumstances define us. We're defined by our environment. And if you're defined by your environment, then you've got really nothing to bring to your environment. You're not going to be much good for anybody. You're just going to be a victim of your environment. But when we can have the maturity, and it is an act of maturity, to in the middle of the darkest situation set our eyes upon the Lord and remind ourselves of His greatness, and remind ourselves of His power, and celebrate the fact that in the end He's victorious, even when we don't see how He could possibly be victorious, when we can have the maturity in the midst of the darkness to look to the light and celebrate the light, well, see, now, now the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. You've got a strength. Now there can be an encouragement in your spirit, and now there can be a perspective that you get. There's something, you know, the, the bigger God is to you, the more manageable the problems are. When you're just defined by the problems, they're huge, they're unsolvable, they're despairing, they're hopeless. But when you can, in the midst of that, make the choice to celebrate who God is, because God isn't defined by the circumstances... His glory is forever and ever. His character is the same. And when we can hold on to that, it gives us a perspective on life's problems. In fact, it gives us a perspective on life itself. Because the truth is God is way bigger than your problems and God is way bigger than your sorrows and God is way bigger than life itself. Someone said, don't sweat the small stuff and it's all small stuff. But you can only say that when you have a God that's bigger than all this stuff. And when we come before God, regardless of our situation and regardless of our emotions, and make the choice to, to pour ourselves out in celebrating who He is, it puts a perspective on everything. And it gives you now something. It doesn't make the problems go away. The kingdom is never about faking it. The kingdom is never about being in la-la land and pretending like life isn't warfare and pretending like things are all wonderful. There's no pretending in the kingdom. There's no faking it in the kingdom. There's no la, 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 la in the kingdom. God only deals in the commodity of reality. And the reality is that we're in war. And war and war, you sometimes take big hits. So I'm not here to, make, to give little, little you know, frosting on 